Okay, so what we have here is some copper metal, nice pretty copper metal. And copper, as we've seen from our net potentials or our reduction potential, standard reduction potential table, we've seen that it is pretty unreactive. It's a reason why copper is used in, in, in our homes for water. It resists oxidation. So what I'm going to try to force to oxidize this pretty copper, okay, by adding a oxidizing agent that's pretty strong. So I'm going to put some nice copper in here and we're going to use nitric acid and it's not the action of the H plus as we've seen from our reduction table that actually will be strong enough to pull electrons from the copper it's actually the nitrate ion that is a copper is basically an electron sink that pulls electrons from the uh, copper so the nitrate ion from a re standard reduction table, we'll see that it is a strong enough oxidizing agent to make this happen. So let's put some nitric acid. And as I showed in class, hydrochloric acid or the proton doesn't make copper okay, oxidize. And we've seen that with our copper penny demonstration where I uh, put a hole in the copper penny and we basically hollowed it out because the newer pennies are mostly made of zinc. Zinc and H plus are spontaneous will give me positive volts because H plus or zinc is a really good at oxidizing it's a strong reducing agent but the um, H plus is not strong enough to make zinc or in this case copper oxidize case in point if I was to put some strong acid okay concentrated acid in here okay and We'll do that, and let's pull this up a little higher. I'm in a fume hood. So concentrated hydrochloric acid, as you can see, has no action on the copper. The H+, plus, even though it's from a concentrated source like so, um, hydrochloric acid, has no effect on the copper. The proton is just not a strong oxidizing agent. But the nitrate ion in nitric acid is. So nitric acid does produce protons, but those protons have really no effect on the uh, oxidation. It's the nitrate ion. So let's add some nitric acid. And we see a nice brown NO2 gas given off. I'm going to stopper this. And we're going to bubble that NO2 gas and I'm fuming out the fumes here. And look very carefully. See a nice brown NO2. If you look at our half reaction in the class, we actually get N2O4. And N2O4 has an equilibrium that favors the NO2. So we're actually N2O4 is made, but it uh, once that's made, it produces or shoots out to the NO2 gas. Okay. And we can see that we're producing a good amount of this NO2 brown gas and it's slowing down. The reaction seems to be coming to an end. There's a limiting reagent. Now the limiting reagent, I'm guessing, okay, is the copper, probably added enough nitric acid. So eventually this reaction is going to go to its completion and stop when you know it's stopped when the bubbles stop appearing, okay. And we're going to look for something pretty cool here as this occurs. As this cools, Okay, so the reaction stops. This is a very exothermic reaction. So we produced a lot of heat, and we produced gases, and the gases in here expanded with the heat. So as this cools, as the reaction slows down, as you see here, what you're going to see is that the pressure in this round bottom flask, or in this Florence flask, is going to decrease as the gases cool. Okay, we're creating a partial vacuum here. And if you look very carefully, we're going to see the water being drawn into the Florence flask as this flask cools. So there was exothermic heat given off, the gas was given off, there was an expansion of the volume of gases because of the high temperature that was given off. Now the flask is cooling, so with lower temperature, lower pressure, we're drawing the water back. And you can see the line, okay? 
you can see the NO2 line and the water line. It's a nice distinction, nice contrast. And here it comes over the beaker, and here it comes right here being drawn up. You can follow that line. And watch as it fills, because right now we have copper plus two ions. And with the water, we're going to make a coordinated complex that has that unique color that we've talked about. And here it is. So we're drawing the water back and look carefully at the color that we make. Okay. And the cop that greenish blue color that we make with the copper, and it's a pretty good contrast here. The NO2 gas that's still in equilibrium with the air, and we have the production of our copper plus two ions. Very neat reaction. The water's going to stop when it gets past the line. It's a nice redox reaction, a nice spontaneous redox reaction. Copper ions are left. Okay? Hope you enjoyed that.